right, everyone, I think we're going to get started. Uh, again, my name is Kathleen Harper. I'm with Potomac Wave Consulting. And uh, this is a webinar, our FED Data Check webinars, part of a weekly series that we do. Uh, we host every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. All topics uh, ranging from all over the place, but focusing on improving uh, federal procurement metrics. This week's topic is FPDSNG Data Element 5J, the fee paid for use of IDV, which is a tr pretty tricky, surprisingly tricky data element to complete in FPDSNG. All right, so here's the agenda for today. We're going to go over some introductions. I'm going to make a few announcements about some future webinars and also regarding this webinar as well. And then we're going to jump into today's webinar topic, which covers, again, properly coding that fee paid for use of IDV data element in FPDSNG. I've kind of broken down the agenda for today's webinar here as well. And then at the end, we're going to go over just some standard Fed data check and Potomac Wave overviews. Kind of saving that for the end because as we log on to these webinars every week, we realize that we get a lot of uh, repeat attendees uh, and that information is pretty standard, doesn't change much. So I leave those overviews until the end. If you want to stick around and hear more about that data check, hear more about a Potomac Wave, please do. Uh, but just know that's why we're holding that off until the end. So starting with some introductions, uh, I'm Kathleen Harper, the SharePoint developer with Potomac Wave Consulting. My contact information is listed here on the PowerPoint in case you have any questions. Uh, after the webinar, you can email or give me a call. Um, I want to mention that we do have a YouTube channel. We post videos, uh, recordings of our webinars every week to our YouTube channel. We also have some general training videos on our YouTube channel um, and some overviews of Fed Data Check, different products, reports, dashboards uh, that we provide as well are on our Fed Data Check YouTube channel. I've linked the channel in the PowerPoint as well, so you can click on that link and please do subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get our subscribers up so that we can have a dedicated Fed Data Check YouTube channel. Makes us a little bit easier to find, uh, makes things a little bit cleaner. I've also listed the website for Potomac Wave. If you want to jump on there and find out more about our company. Okay, so I'm going to go over a few brief announcements. We, like I said, host webinars every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we do have a featured webinar coming up. It's going to be on April 26th. And our featured webinar is going to be discussing the NCMA membership. A little bit different than our other webinars, we've got a special guest co-host who is going to be uh, Michael Fischetti, who's the executive director of the NCMA. Uh, the NCMA is something that we, at least the World Congress, is something that we attend every year. Um, and so what Michael's going to be talking about is uh, how a membership to the NCMA can assist you in answering your acquisition questions. Um, you're going to be able to network with other contracting professionals and have fun doing so. Uh, advance your career through certification services and leadership development. Um, and again, I've included a link to click here and you can register for that webinar uh, via this PowerPoint. One thing I also want to cover is that uh, you can receive CLP points for attending these Fed Data Check webinars. Currently, COs and CSs with the following agencies are eligible, so NOAA, NIST, Interior Fish and Wildlife, SEC, Education, and Treasury. Um, are able to get those CLP points. Uh, also, anyone can attempt to receive those points by submitting through PayTabs. 
uh, a few notes about the CLP points. Um, in order to receive them, there is some tracking on the GoToWebinar end uh, that does track how engaged you are in the webinar, uh, which includes kind of keeping the webinar on your main screen. If there are any polls or surveys, participating in those will also get your engagement level up and uh, allow you to qualify for those points. And then entering any questions or chats that you have in the chat box, raising your hand and jumping on the line, those will also get your engagement level up <coughs> and allow you to qualify for those CLP points. All right. With all that said, we are going to jump into today's topic. One thing I want to mention is that everybody on the line is going to be muted by default. Um, when we get large crowds, <clears throat> the GoToWebinar kind of mutes those by default so that we aren't hearing any background noise. However, we do want to encourage you to participate. Um, there's an option to raise your hand on your menu. So if you click the raise your hand button, uh, I'll be able to see that your hand is raised. And I can then unmute you and you can jump in on the line to either ask a question um, or contribute any feedback that you might have. Um, if you don't jump on the line, there's also a questions box where you can type in any questions that you might have as we're going through uh, the topics um, in today's webinar. And there's also a chat box if you want to uh, chat directly <clears throat> with either uh, myself or my coworker Brian, who is on the line, who's going to be monitoring those questions and comments. In case I don't see them, he might answer them directly for you or he might alert me and let me know, and I can address those on the line so that everybody is able to benefit from those questions and comments. All right, so let's get started. Again, today's webinar is focusing on Data Element 5J in FPDSNG, which is the fee paid for use of IDD. <clears throat> so to jump in and to start discussing how you come about with the correct value for fee paid for use of IDD, uh, we have to first discuss the fee for use of service. Um, and so <clears throat> I've taken these definitions here kind of directly from FPDSNG Data Dictionary, uh, but just want to review these quickly. Uh, so the fee for use of service is the list of administrative fees charged for using an indefinite delivery vehicle. One thing that's important, this next line, is something that we're going to come back to over and over throughout the webinar. Um, it's applied to the total price and costs for contractor performance as billed to the government, regardless of contract type. Um, and so when entering fee for use of service on an IDV and FPDSNG, the values can be one of the following. It's either a fixed fee. Um, you know, 0.5%, 0.45%. Uh, there can be a range of a fee which varies by amount or a range that varies by other factor. Another thing that's important for this fee for use of service uh, is that it does not apply to federal supply schedules. Um, in, for federal supply schedules, that fee is built into the contractor uh, costs. And so that's not listed as a separate fee on federal supply schedules. Instead, it's built into the labor cost. Uh, and I've linked the data dictionary here, and that data element is element 5D. <clears throat> so when you're going through these fees for use of service, they're often referred to by different names. It can be a contract access fee, or it can be an NCAP, the NITAC contracts access, access fee, um, or in the case of NASA soup, it's called the surcharge. Um, but that's the general, uh, general overview for fee for use of service. Um, and again, this is going to be important for helping us determine the actual value for the fee paid for use of IDV. So I think I'm going to launch into a poll here. So now that I've gone over that, uh, basically, that contract access fee. <clears throat> I'm going to jump into the first poll, which is kind of a fun one. Just going to pull the crowd and see how many folks are familiar with NASA Soup's current surcharge. 
So let me launch that poll. All right. So that poll should be up. I'm going to leave it up for about a minute. Um, and <clears throat> again, one thing important about those CLP points, I uh, don't want to harp on it too much, but I just do want to make people aware that answering these polls uh, is definitely uh, important when trying to qualify for those CLP points. So we are still collecting some responses. I'm going to leave it open for uh, a bit longer. Alrighty, we're almost there. We're at about 65%. Hopefully we can get that percent voting up there a little bit. Alright, almost at 70%. Okay. I'm going to close the poll. And I'm going to share these results. So I should be sharing the poll result, results. Hopefully everybody is able to view that on their screen. Um, great. So it looks like we have about 50% who aren't sure, uh, which is great. So hopefully going through this webinar today is going to uh, just increase everyone's knowledge all around the board. Um, we've got 33% at 0.375%, and we have 17% at 0.45%. Alrighty. So let's get into what the actual surcharge is. And if you answered 0.375%, you were correct. So 33% of the folks that answered got that correct, uh, which is great. So I'm going to move on and go into the specifics about NASA soup surcharge. Um, so the two responses that were given were 0.45% and 0.375%. Um, so Recently, very recently, as of February 1st, 2018, uh, the soup surcharge for all orders changed to 0.375%. Um, so again, that's the correct response for the current surcharge. Um, however, if you did answer 0.45%, um, <clears throat> you weren't far off. That used to be the surcharge uh, to access NASA soup. Um, so we weren't far off there. But we appreciate everyone participating in that poll. Um, I've included some information here about that NASA soup surcharge. And I just want to uh, read kind of the first line from here. So as of February 1st, that's what the surcharge is. The fee is included in the price of all products and is not separately listed on quotes. It is the contract holder's responsibility to pay the fee from their quoted product prices. Um, and that's that's going to come in handy later when we're discussing how to properly fill out that fee paid for use of IDV. Um, since that actual value is technically supposed to be the value that the contractor pays. All right. So I like that first poll. I thought it was fun. A lot of people were engaged. Um, so I'm going to launch our second one, which has to do with NITAC contract access fees or NCAFs. Um, and so this second poll is going to be what is the current NCAP or NITAC contract access fee for CIO SP3 small business. So I'm going to launch that poll now. Again, I'm going to leave it open for about a minute. Hopefully we get some good engagement here. Uh, again, voting in these polls definitely makes a difference when qualifying for those CLP points. All right, we're at about 60%. <clears throat> okay. 
CIO SP3 small business. I'm going to give it just a few more seconds and then I'm going to close the poll. Okay. Thanks everyone for participating. That uh, poll is now closed. I'm going to share the results on the screen here. So hopefully everybody is able to see those. Okay, so the poll question was, what is the current NCAF for CIO SP3 small business? Uh, looks like 48% said, I'm not sure. 24% said it was 0.55%. 8% uh, said it was 0.75%. 12% with 0.35% and 8% with 0.65%. So we are a little all over the board there. However, I would say the most common response out of a given percentage was 0.55%. And that would be the correct response. So 0.55% is the correct response for the current NCAF for CIO SP3 small business. I'm going to pull up this information here. Uh, this can get a bit tricky, uh, especially with the CIO SP3. One just is normal CIO SP3. One is CIO SP3 small business. And then there's also CIO CS, which is for commodities, IT commodities and solutions. Um, <clears throat> this has also fairly recently been updated. I believe it was November of 2016. So I guess not as recent, obviously, as NASA Soup being about a month and a half ago. Um, but in the past couple of years, this has changed. Um, so I've listed this. This is directly from the uh, NITAC website, <clears throat> which I've also linked here. And this just gives you some overview information about those <clears throat> uh, NITAC vehicles. And then at the bottom here you can see the contract access fee for each of those vehicles. And I jump to the next page. So well, it looks like January 2016 was when these were uh, last updated. I did notice that a few folks answered with 0.75% for that small business NCAP. Um, so again, if you did answer there, that was a bit outdated. They since have been updated from 0.75% and 1% to 0.55% and 0.65%. Um, there is that fee cap there, too, of 150000 um, once that funding level reaches a certain amount. All right, so I'm also trying to cover all our bases here. So we're now getting into the contract access fees for GWAX, um, which pretty much all across the board is 0.75% uh, contract access fee. I've listed those here. Um, there are, oops, sorry, I'm going to go back a bit. There are new GWAX out, <clears throat> but they are not available for use as of right now, those were awarded in February of 2018. Um, but again, you can see for all these GUFs listed here, 0.75% is that fixed value, which is the fee for use of service. Okay, so I created a bit of a cheat sheet here for everybody. Um, and this list, these common vehicles <clears throat> and their fee name, as well as what the current fee for use of service is uh, as of today, uh, March 22nd, 2018. Um, one thing I do want to mention, I'm not sure if I mentioned this at the beginning of the webinar, um, is oftentimes these PowerPoints can be good for a quick reference to go back to when you're trying to research something or grab information on something. You should be able to access this handout and download this PowerPoint via the menu of GoToWebinar. There is a handout section on that menu, and if you click on that download, you can download this PowerPoint. It might help you follow along today, or it might help um, and become a resource for you uh, later when you need to look up some information or possibly go back to some notes or something like that. 
Um, so I've created this cheat sheet for you here. Again, at the bottom, I've mentioned that for an FSS, the fee for use of service is not applicable. Um, and that fee is not, not listed in the same way as all these other vehicles. Uh, that fee is built into the labor costs on FSS. All right. I do want to pause and make sure that we don't have any questions. Um, let me just take a minute to review and see if anybody's hand is raised or see if anybody has entered anything into the chat box or to the comments box. Looks like we're good, so I'm going to keep going. Again, keep in mind, please feel free to jump in if you have any questions or comments that you want to add in uh, throughout today's webinar. No need to hold anything until the end. Okay, so now that we've covered what the fee for use of service is, which is essentially um, the contract access fee or the surcharge uh, to use that IDV. Uh, now we're going to jump into uh, the actual data element that is the focus of today's webinar, which is element 5J, the fee paid for use of IDV. Um, so you may think that these things are very similar. The fee for use of service um, is obviously deeply related to the fee paid for use of IDV, um, but it becomes a little bit tricky when trying to code this particular data element. So again, I'm taking a lot of this information directly from the data dictionary, but I do want to go over the exact definition of this data element just to make sure that everyone's got a clear understanding of it. So the fee paid for use of IDV is the fee paid to an IDV awarding agency for placing an order against that IDV. Uh, this data element, and this is important, an important aspect of it, this data element refers to the fee paid by the vendor. Um, so it's actually the contractor that's going to be paying that fee uh, to the IDV holder. Um, this field is required on delivery and task orders for both civilian agencies and DOD. It's also required for BPA calls and not applicable for DCAs and purchase orders. Uh, another important part that we're going to be jumping back to is that this data element, or the value from this data element, <coughs> is entered on the mod zero, and it propagates to all the mods. Uh, this is something that's adding to the trickiness of filling out this data element in FPDSNG, uh, which we'll go over in just a little bit. Uh, the agency placing the order will be the ones who enter the dollar value of the fee charged for this action. I'm going to click on this data dictionary here. This is the updated version of the FPDSNG data dictionary. And I'm going to jump to the paid for use of IDV. <clears throat> and I just want to show you, again, those propagation rules here. Um, so you note that it's required on delivery orders and task orders that reference these schedules. Not applicable for some, and it propagates on all the mods, which we're going to revisit in just a bit. Alrighty. So it's time for our third poll. Um, I'm guessing this one might uh, might be all over the place just because in looking at all the data, this seems to be a very, very tricky data element to fill out. Um, so when filling out an FPDSNG record, how do you determine the value that you're going to enter into the fee paid for use of IED? So I'm going to launch that poll right now. Again, it's going to be related to that contract access fee. That's how you're going to come up with it. But we've definitely noticed some different ways of doing this all throughout the government. So I just launched that poll. Um, it may be a little tricky, these responses I've been giving. Um, but what I have here is the way to determine it is by taking a percent of the obligated amount. Do you take a percent of the base and exercise options amount, uh, base and all? 
Um, so we're just trying to figure out what the majority of folks do to calculate or to determine what they're going to enter in to the fee paid for use of IDD. It looks like we've got about 60% voting. Hoping to get just a few more. I'll leave it open for about 15 more seconds. Alright, I'm going to close the poll in just a few seconds. And okay. All right, I closed the poll. I'm going to share the results here now, and hopefully everybody is able to see them on their screen. Okay, so it looks like the most common answer is by taking the percent from the obligated amount. So that's the way um, most of you, at least on the line, are filling out the fee paid for use of IDV. So to take an example, um, <clears throat> for the GWAX, um, earlier, I noted that pretty much all of those access fees were 0.75%. Um, and so what most of you are saying is in order to determine this fee paid for use of IDV, um, you're taking 0.75% of the obligated amount in order to come up with that fee paid for use of IDV. So that's 38% of you are using the obligated amount. Uh, the next most common is 25% of you take that percentage from the base and all options value or the total contract value. Um, so that's 25%. 13% of you say that you use the base and exercised options value to determine the fee paid for use of IDV. So again, if it was if you're use, using one of those GWACs there, you would use 0.75% of the base and exercised options value. And then 25% of you say, I am not sure. Um, okay, <clears throat> so this is a uh, part where it starts to get pretty tricky in terms of how um, folks are determining the fee paid for use of IDV. Um, and for this one, I kind of left the answer blank, hoping to foster a discussion between everyone. Uh, the reason why I left this blank and the reason why uh, this is such a tricky data element to code um, is one because currently in FPDSNG there doesn't seem to be any consistent pattern of how the fee paid for use of IDV is coded. Um, and so I've kind of listed a few reasons up here for why it's so tricky to code this value. So one is that the uh, this data element can only be recorded on mod zeros. Like I said earlier, it propagates through all modifications. Um, but one thing that we noted earlier was in the definition of fee paid for use of IDV um, and also fee for use of service is that it's applied for the total price and costs of contractor performance as billed to the government regardless of contract type. Um, so that's the basically what they're saying is that that contract access fee is going to be applied. Oh, sorry about that is going to be applied to at some point to the total contract value. Um, but the reason why that's difficult is because uh, if there are options to be exercised, uh, that value is not going to be listed in the obligated amount on, as a total on mod zero. So let's look into some examples of, of codings of fee paid for use of IDV. <clears throat> and actually, before I do that, I do want to jump into these other reasons. So it, it can start to get a little bit tricky when talking about this. So if I'm, if I'm losing anyone here, again, please feel free to raise your hand or jump in and add any comments or questions that you might have. Um, but another reason why this data element is so tricky is because it's technically, this data element is technically the value that the contractor is paying um, to use that IDV. Um, and for instance, I was speaking with someone, one of the contract leads at NASA Soup, 
Um, and she was informing me that, <clears throat> yes, the contractor pays this fee, um, but they're only paying the fee if the option is exercised. Um, so each time that op option is exercised, that is when the contractor pays the fee. Um, and as everyone knows, it, it's always possible that not every action will be exercised as intended. Uh, so when it comes back to filling out this data element, fee paid for use of IDB, uh, it's hard to determine whether or not you should essentially estimate that fee based on the intended amount of options, which would uh, likely be the base null options value, or do you list the actual fee that's paid uh, on that first uh, mod zero? Um, the thing that, again, making this tricky is that this data element propagates. So this can only be reported one time, even though the contractor is making payments multiple times. Uh, another thing is it's hard to find much guidance on how to enter this fee. We've talked a lot to a lot of contracting folks all across the government, especially this week in prepping for this webinar. Um, and again, all these answers are kind of all over the board. Um, so we're hoping to foster some conversation today, uh, get people interested in this particular data element, um, and try to come to a consensus on the proper way to fill these out. Alrighty, so I'm going to jump in, like I said, to some examples of what we're seeing when it comes to the paid for use of IEB. Again, feel free to jump in with any questions or comments that you might have. Alrighty. Okay. So I'm logging into FPDSMG here. And I'm looking not zero with this particular record against my attack here. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see my screen. I pull, pulled up an example from Department of Commerce <clears throat> referencing a NITAC uh, here. And here's what I want to look at is this amount section. Um, so we have the obligated amount listed. Again, this is the mod zero. This is where this data element is recorded. Um, and since it propagates throughout every modification, uh, this value should stay the same through every modification of this record. Um, so looking at the obligated amount here, which is 424,757, I'm going to look at the base and all is 520.434. So there's obviously, they're obviously intending uh, on exercising another option for this contract. Not all of the money was spent here. Um, but since that's the case, how do we record this fee paid for use of IDB? I'm also going to look this. One second, I'll look at the my tech. Yep, this just confirming that this is a my tech vehicle. Okay. So I've got a spreadsheet that we use at the data check. Uh, this is for those of you familiar with Fed Data Check, this uh, Excel feature um, is a nice tool that you get when you're a subscriber to Fed Data Check. It allows you kind of to do your own ad hoc analysis, uh, connecting the spreadsheet to our database so you can run any sort of analysis that you'd like to. So what I'm doing, um, this spreadsheet has been set up to look at a bunch of orders against NITEC schedules. And so this is the particular order that I'm looking at. Again, you can see that this is the obligated amount that was listed in that FPDSNG record. And this is the base and all options amount right here. And then this is the fee paid for use of IDD. In these two columns here, I've calculated a percentage um, based off of the obligated amount 
as well as the base metal options amount. Um, so again, this is comparing the fee paid for use of IDV to those two different amounts. Um, if you recall, going back to our poll, the majority of folks answered that in order to come up with this value for fee paid for use of IDV, <clears throat> they take the percentage, uh, the given percentage from the obligated amount. Um, and so what I've done here is I've calculated these percentages in these two columns here. So the first percentage you're looking at, which is 0.55%. And if you go back to our NITAC fees, oops, uh, if you go back to our NITAC fees for CIO SP3 small business, you are going to note that the contract access fee is 0.55 percent. Um, so that is the value compared to the obligated amount. So it looks like on this particular record, whoever entered this in from the Department of Commerce ended up taking 0.55 percent of the obligated amount, and that's how they came up with the fee paid for use of IDV. Um, the reason I say that is looking at this 0.449 percent, um, I guess, None of that really coincides with any of the contract access fees listed for NITAC, at least currently. We are looking at current uh, orders in FY18 and FY17. Um, so it looks like for this particular record, um, like most of you answered, you have taken the percentage of the obligated amount to come up with the fee paid for use of IDV. Um, I do want to show, so that is, uh, that is one way to come up with that, uh, that value. Um, however, if we go back to the PowerPoint, what I noted uh, and why this is so difficult to code this particular data element is that that value is only recorded on the mod zero. And if you go back to look at that record in FPDSNG, uh, taking that percentage of the obligated amount <coughs> gives you that, gives you the correct percentage there, but the next time the option, if the option is exercised as intended, and another modification is filled out, that option is exercised, uh, the obligated amount that's going to be listed, let's say it's the uh, full base null options value, and so you're adding on that obligation amount there, taking that 0.55 percent of that action obligation is going to be different than the fee paid for use of IDV here. So it's going to be, there's going to be a discrepancy once that option is exercised. Uh, once that option is exercised, since that value propagates through, there's going to be a discrepancy there. So it looks like we uh, have a few questions here. All right. So we have one question that says, sometimes the vendors tell us what their fees are. Should we trust that? Um, let me see. Hopefully I'm able to unmute you. I probably need a little more clarification on that question, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, Alita, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, hi there. Okay, so I unmuted you there. Um, could you clarify that a little bit about the vendors informing you what their fees are? Yeah, on a GWAC contract, um, they usually will, they used to put the fee down separate, and sometimes I ask and they give it. Should we trust that total? Um, so I probably wouldn't be able to uh, give you that, that advice on, on my standpoint, I'm not a contracting uh, officer or specialist and um, not really an expert in, in that field. Um, but what I will say uh, there is that those GWAC contract access fees are kind of out there, out there and known. Um, so although the contractor does pay those fees, um, they're the ones responsible for paying those fees. Um, they're not the ones entering into FPDSNG, if that makes sense. Um, right. So I guess, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to 
give you that advice on because I'm also not sure what type of information or fees that they're they're giving you. Um, but in terms of what needs to be paid uh, in order to access that contract, um, you know that's kind of publicly available. That fee for use of service is also typically listed um, on the IDV FPDSNG record as well. So you can go into FPDSNG and you can see um, when it's a GWAC, you can see that, again, that fee for use of service that we talked about at the beginning of the webinar, that's typically listed in FPDSNG as well. So, um, yeah, I'm not really sure how to answer that, but I would say definitely refer to the official uh, contract access fees that are given to you from these uh, Thank, Thank you. you, of course. Okay, so that brings up a uh, good point. <clears throat> I want to jump in. I do see that we have some more questions. I do want to jump into one thing very quickly. Um, and I, d I definitely will make sure to get to everybody who is asking these questions on the line. Um, so I'm jumping into these GWAX here. Mm, let me see if I can come up with a good example. <clears throat> All right. So I want to jump into some examples of uh, common coding scenarios for this fee paid for use of IDV. And again, I'm going to bring up this Excel spreadsheet here. And this is kind of just a way of me running ad hoc analysis uh, against FPDSNG data. Uh, but what I've got here are a bunch, uh, a bunch of awards referencing GWAX. And in the fee paid for use of IDV column, it's listed as $0. Um, so that is something that's inconsistent with what I've read about GWAX. You would think that um, if these awards are referencing a GWAX, almost every single one of them that I looked at there had a 0.75% access fee. Um, something here is listed that GSA includes fee caps when a certain dollar threshold is met. I have seen that as well. Um, I know that it's absolutely listed for, a fee cap is absolutely listed for an ITAC. Um, I haven't uh, exactly read anything on that for the for GSA in terms of what's available publicly, uh, but that is a good point. And then we also have somebody saying that the fee, uh, the fee for NASA soup is included in the pricing paid, so I'm not sure how you're saying it, it should be listed. Uh, let me see if I can unmute Diana, I believe it was. Hi, is Diana, are you on the line? I am. All right, awesome. Um, so you had a question here about the C for NASA soup. Would you mind just clarifying that a little bit? So I'm trying to understand. If I pay $50,000 for something on NASA soup 5, that mm -hmm. $50,000 that I'm paying includes the NASA soup fee, but I don't actually see it as a line item or something separate. Right, so that's something interesting, and again, hopefully why we're uh, having this conversation here is that a lot of folks we've talked with across the contracting community um, have said that they always include these fee paid for use of IDV as uh, a separate line item, um, and then we've heard people say that they don't list it as a separate line item. Um, what we are trying to get at here is trying to figure out <clears throat> the best way or what is the proper way to actually come to a conclusion on what the value should be <laughs> for the fee paid for use of IDB. Um, so that's the reason why it's a little tricky um, be because what it actually is or the fee that the contractor actually pays to NASA soup. Um, is dependent upon the total contract value. However, they only pay the fee when the actions are actually exercised, or when the, uh, you know, when the options are actually exercised. 
Um, so in theory, uh, to, to me and, and our team here, when we're analyzing this, it seems like the fee paid for use of IDD, especially since it's only able to be recorded on the mod zero, uh, to us it seems like it's almost an estimate of sorts um, that you're kind of putting in in that data element if every action or uh, every option is exercised as intended, this would be the fee. Um, you know, however, let's say you have, um, you know, let's say there's a million dollar million dollar contract, um, and you know there's going to be two options that are exercised: five uh, five hundred thousand the first time, five hundred thousand the second time. Like I said, the contractor would pay that fee twice, so it would be split up over those two options. Um, however, what we're trying to get at is what is the proper way to code that fee paid for use of IDB. Since it's only coded on the mod zero, uh, you know, the second that you exercise an option, uh, that fee technically should change if you're only doing it against the obligated amount. Does that make any sense? I know we're kind of kind of walking around in, in circles here, but I guess the, the answer is that we're not exactly sure on that, uh, on the exact instruction on how to, how to fill out that data element. Um, you know, and part of the reason that is so tricky and what we're getting at is that propagation of that value. Um, because it essentially to us seems like it, it should be an estimated value uh, based on what the total, uh, total contract price will be since the fee paid for, or fee for use of service or all the contract action fees, uh, those are applied to the total price and the total cost for the contractor performance. Um, not sure if that answers your question, but hopefully we're getting a little bit closer to, to finding that out. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Diana. All right. Um, so I want to jump into common coding scenarios for this fee paid for use of IDV. Uh, again, I'm jumping into our um, Excel ad hoc analysis tool here. Um, and what I'm looking at on this page is all of these orders against GWAX. Um, what you have here are the particular uh, the order information or the contract information. Uh, and then you have the obligated amount, base and all options amount. And then you can see that the fee paid for use of IDV is zero dollars here. Um, and as we noted, all of those GWACs have a 0.75% contract access fee. Um, so that seems to be inconsistent with the contract access fee. Uh, the fee paid for use of IDV here seems to be inconsistent with the contract access fee. So let's jump into this example. I'm going to take a look. At this particular record in FPDSMG. Again, I was only looking at mod zeros here. Uh, so you can see, <clears throat> this is for IT services, action obligation, base and, all, uh, base and exercise, and base and all options. And then you have the fee paid for use of IDV as zero dollars. And taking a look at that, oops, sorry, switching screens on there. <coughs> yeah, PDSMG seems to be loading. Yep, you can see, so I'm, now I'm looking at the uh, GWAC that was referenced. And if you go in to look at that record in FPSMG, you can see that the fee for use of service is a fixed amount at 0.75%. This is the GWAC 8A stars 2. And so that's an example of something we're looking at where even though we're still uh, kind of going back and forth on what should actually be recorded for this fee paid for use of IDV, um, it seems like we can be sure that it definitely, when you're referencing a GWAC or NASA SOUP uh, or any of these NITAC, 
uh, IDDs that the fee should not be zero. Uh, does anybody have any opinions on, on that assertion? That uh, if you're referencing, uh, you know, one of those SIO CP3, or if you're re referencing NASA SOUP or a GWAC, if the fee paid for use of IDD is listed as zero, that seems a little bit inconsistent. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Looks like we do have a comment here on someone. I'm Rhonda. I'm just trying to find you so I can unmute you. Okay, Rhonda, I've unmuted you. Did you have something to add there? Um, yeah, the way I do mine is I... Like, for example, on NASA Soup, when you process the order through them, they send you a confirmation it was processed, and they tell you how much that fee is. So that's just on the base year, and I put that in there when, on my mod zero. When I get ready to exercise an option and I create my next mod, then I just go into FPDSNG and do a correction or mod the FPDSNG and add the additional funds for my my option oh, okay. here that I exercise. That way it's just a rolling total and it's always correct. Right. If, if you estimate it, you guess it up front, then all of a sudden program office says, hey, we're not going to exercise the options. Then you have to go, then are you going to remember to go back in and check that? Because I right. mean, PDSNG is reported to Congress. That's the money that's been spent. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I think a lot of people aren't aware of the fees and that's why those are all showing zeros. I, th right. I think there's just a lot, I mean, because I've been, you know, through a lot of, um, um, training classes with our ECMS stuff that we do um, it, with the VA and report it, you know, right. it, the system automatically reports it to FBDSG. And so I just know they've never really talked about it in the VA. So I don't know about other agencies, but I have a right. feeling that there's just a lot of people don't understand it. Yeah. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, I really appreciate it because that does clear a few things up. Um, and so, what, and that's also something that we discussed when talking with other contracting professionals this week is, uh, you know, like you said, there's a few ways you can do it. If you do estimate it, it ends up being wrong for at least some point uh, if all the uh, options haven't been exercised yet. Um, so I think that is a good way to do it, like you said. If you're ordering from, uh, you know, from NASA Soup and they send you what that actual fee is going to be, you record that on the mod zero, um, and then the next time you go to exercise the option, the real, you know, the true way to be able to make sure that that field is accurate would be to go to that mod zero and and make that change there, or make that correction, if you will, there, or update, if you will, on the mod zero there. Um, however, as we know, you know, all contracting officers and specialists are extremely busy. So every time that happens, that's also something that's difficult to remember is, oh, I have to go back to that to that base or that mod zero and make that correction in order for this to be accurate. Um, but that is something we discussed with, with folks earlier this week, um, so that's a good point and a good suggestion on, on how to do that as accurately as possible. Thanks, Rhonda, for that comment. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Let's see here. All right, so I'm jumping, sorry, I'm running a little bit into our time here, but I want to jump into a few more examples just because um, for those of you not familiar with FPD or with Fed Data Check, um, we do have a series of data quality uh, validation checks. Um, and so what we're trying to do is come up with uh, different data checks where we can pinpoint when we know for sure, at least, that this fee paid for use of IDV has been incorrectly recorded. Um, so from what we've gone over today, it's really difficult to pinpoint the accuracy of this data element. There's so many different ways that people are doing it, so many different ways that people are entering it, and also there is no consensus, at least as far as I'm aware. Um, if anybody is aware, please jump in. <laughs> but there's no official consensus or official validation rule on, on how you should calculate that, that particular uh, data element. So I want to run over these common coding scenarios. That first one I just showed you was if the fee paid for use of IDV is $0 for anything against NASA SOUP or a GWAC or using NITAC, uh, that's something that seems to be inconsistent with what that fee paid for use of IDV should be. 
Um, so that's something, even though we're still, again, like I said, a little unsure of the official rules for that data element, that's something we can definitely say is probably incorrect, um, would be that 0% against a GWAC, NASA soup, or NITAC. Another thing that we can definitely say um, is going to be an incorrect entry is if you have the same value down the line. And I'm going to give you an example of what I mean there. Let's see if I can find something. I have all these examples ready to go. And then of course when you're in a rush, here's one possible one. Uh, so what I mean by the same value down the road is you've got the same value listed at, for the obligated amount, for the base and all options amount, for the base and exercised options amount, as well as the fee paid for use of IDD. And let me see if I can find an exact. Of course, I'm having difficulty coming out of this right now. Okay. Okay. And while I'm looking for this, we do have another question here, or a comment here. It is possible that there is an agency memorandum of agreement which discounts the fee for special high-volume customers and maybe a reason for confusion of not knowing what fee to include. Uh, that is another good point. Um, we have seen that, you know, uh, there are special occasions or special instances where that fee might be different for other people, or like you said, for high volume customers. Um, so that's another thing that could be adding to the confusion uh, of this particular data element. Um, there's kind of a lot of things we've seen all across the board uh, that are definitely adding to the confusion of this reporting. All right. Um, fortunately, I'm having difficulty finding one of those examples that I'm talking about, but one of the other common things that we're seeing, um, and I'm going to pull up this example, is that the same, the same amount is listed throughout the FPDSNG record. Um, and we've seen that on typically on um, on awards that don't have any options to be exercised. People just go down the line, and for each data element, they enter um, the same value. So that's another scenario where, um, although we're still still up in the air about this data element, that's something that we can definitely say uh, is likely incorrect. Uh, another common coding scenario that we found is um, any amount listed other than zero dollars when the reference vehicle is in FSS. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, um, that fee for use of service is not applicable for an FSS, um, and there is no fee paid for use of IDV um, when referencing an FSS, and that's because that fee is built into those labor costs. So again, I'm pulling up our spreadsheet here, um, and this is just a tool we use a data check uh, to be able to uh, easily slice into this data. And actually, here's a good example of one of those keys all across the board. Take a look here. Uh, referencing a federal supply schedule here. And again, you can see this is kind of one of those examples that I was looking for, so that people go in to enter all of these amounts uh, for $5,800, and they're entering the same amount for every data element there. Um, so that's another common coding scenario that we found. Any amount listed other than $0 when you're referencing an FSS, that's also going to be incorrect. Um, just because that fee does not apply for a federal, federal supply schedule. 
And so I've listed here fee paid for use of IDV entered based off the obligated amount. Um, so interestingly, in our poll, most people said that's how they determine the fee paid for use of IDV. Um, I did appreciate um, whoever jumped in and was, in, was mentioning that every time they exercise an option, they make sure to go in and update that mod zero um, just to make sure that every time that option is exercised, they're updating that fee based on um, you know, what they're getting from MassaSoup or the information that they're getting from MassaSoup. Um, because as it, as it is, the contractor does pay that fee only when the option is exercised. Uh, Rhonda, did you have another did you have another comment there? I, I saw that your hand was raised. I'm not sure if I just didn't put it down or not. Uh, no, I'm good right now. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, and not me to rush. I know we're a little bit over an hour here. I apologize for keeping folks a little bit late. Um, but kind of getting to the whole point of this is what we're trying to do is make this data uh, that's entered into FPVSNG more accurate and allow you to be able to trust this data, rely on this data, and possibly use this data for your own data analysis uh, if you'd like to run any reports or, or run any analysis based on that data element. Currently, we have two data checks that flag uh, these data inconsistencies uh, as it relates to the fee paid for use of IDV. Um, what we currently do is if the fee paid for the use of IDV is greater than 10% of the base null options value or the base and exercised options value, that's when we flag it as definitely being incorrect. Did you? All right. That's when we definitely flag it as being incorrect. Um, so that 10% is really high. Um, and so what we are trying to do is definitely narrow down these two checks, update them a bit, and make sure that um, we're accurately flagging these inconsistencies when we find them. Uh, so like I said, these are the current data checks that we have regarding fee paid for use of IDV, and these are proposed updates to these data, data checks. Um, and, and this would be really helpful if we you know, could get anybody's input on these um, proposed updates. Uh, let's see here. So instead of doing a data, data validation to flag any records where the fee paid for use of IDV is over 10%, we thought about including a percent range. So we were going to update that amount. Uh, so based on the information that we went over today, there's kind of going to be a low amount. Um, so if you are using NITAC or NASA Soup or a GWAC, uh, from all of the given information or that available information on those contract access fees, if you're using uh, NITAC, NASA Super, GWAC, that percentage for the fee paid for use of IDV should not be between 0 and 0.2%, uh, because there's, there's definitely going to be a fee. Uh, that fee didn't seem to go above 0.35%. So we're kind of keeping it at 0.2. We're thinking about toying with a low low range for a percentage when using uh, those GUX, NITAC, or NASA Soup. Um, and then we're going also with a high range. So another thing we noticed is, um, you know, on the old NITAC, the old NITAC contract access fee was 1%, but as of January 2016, those fees dropped, and the highest one is now 0.65%. Um, so other than that, with the GWAX being 0.75%, we're, um, we're, we're saying here that if the fee paid for use of IDV in any of those cases was over 1%, that would also be a reason to flag an error or an, error or an inconsistency in that record. Um, <clears throat> uh, again, this is another example that we went over, uh, but we would also flag something that referenced an FSS and where that fee wasn't listed as zero dollars. So if you're referencing an FSS, that fee uh, does not exist or should not exist and therefore should be zero when, when it's entered into FPDSNG. And this last one kind of goes along with the lower range percentage, but again, when you're using ITAC, NASA Soup, or a GWAC, the value cannot be zero dollars. 
Um, as far as we know, each of those have a known, uh, publicly known contract access fee or surcharge, uh, if you will. And so that's another assertion we're making in terms of properly filling out uh, that data element. Uh, okay, I've gone a little bit over time. I do apologize for going over time, but this uh, this uh, data element is particularly tricky. I do have a final poll for everyone. I'm kind of curious uh, to see how many of you are kind of thinking about this data element or using this data element when you're conducting any of your data analysis. Um, so I'm going to share the last poll. Uh, it's just a yes or no. So do you currently use this data element, fee paid for use of IDV, to conduct any of your own data analysis? Um, and while everybody's answering that question, I really do appreciate your time. Um, if you do have any more questions and want to stay on the line, um, please feel free to do so and we can dive into this a little bit more. Um, I definitely have some more examples um, and there's uh, you know, always a lot to talk about with this particular data element since it's so up in the air. Um, I do also have some overviews of Fed Data Check in general, as well as Potomac Wave in general, uh, which I'll go over for anybody who's new on the line. Uh, but anybody who joins us weekly is aware that uh, we kind of do, <clears throat> do our overviews every week. That's why we save it until the end. I'm going to close the poll uh, in just a few minutes. Thanks, everybody, who's uh, attended and shared your time with us today, especially those who've commented and questioned. We really appreciate it. Um, if anybody does use this data element for your own data analysis, it looks like a few of you do, uh, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or you want to start troubleshooting uh, uh, anything that relates to this data element. If not, I'll give it a few minutes for folks to drop off if you'd like to. And then I'm going to go into overview about Fed Data Check as well as Potomac Wave. Or I'll stay on the line if anybody wants to raise their hand. I can unmute you. You can pop in and ask, ask any questions or add any comments as well. Uh, again, thank you everyone for your time. We really appreciate it. We hope to see you next Thursday at our weekly webinar installments. Again, 2 p.m. Eastern every Thursday. Uh, don't forget to download the PowerPoint if you haven't already, and we appreciate your time. <laughs>